Hi everyone, my name is Nikita Gupta and I my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm one of the facilitators at the UCLA RISE Center delivering healing-centered programs and resilience-focused coaching and education to students, staff, and faculty across campus. It is my privilege and honor to be part of this virtual program and series for students who are sheltering in place in uh, spaces that do not feel safe. When we think about safety, uh, safety occurs on a physical level, on an emotional level, on a psychological and spiritual level. Safety is experienced through our bodies. And for many students who are in unsafe homes, it can feel very isolating and even such a nuanced experience that it can be hard to talk about. So many times students may feel guilt for having those feelings, especially if they are living with their caregivers, uh, including parents, um, foster parents, who do mean well, but are still not able to provide them the space uh, and the resources that they may need emotionally. So for example, um, feeling unsafe, and maybe you're a student who is a student of color, whose family uh, are immigrated to the United States, and who expect you to work really hard, um, have provided you the opportunity to do so, but you are somebody who is shifting in your identity. Maybe you have a different religion that you're interested in than you grew up from with. Um, maybe it's a different major that you feel more drawn towards. Maybe you're exploring your own sexual identity and finding that, oh, this is not what my parents or my caregivers expect of me. So it can create a lot of internal conflict for yourself and also on the outside, it can impact the type of intimacy and authenticity that we have with the people around us. So we wanna acknowledge that that is real and that to go through that experience is not your fault. And sometimes the complexities of life, the intersection of different identities, mindsets, beliefs, assumptions, and ideologies, they rub up against each other and we find ourselves in a difficult experience within our bodies. <clears throat> the way that um, this can show up in our body, the feeling of being unsafe in our environment can be categorized in four different ways based on the way that our nervous system responds to stress. We can be in a fight mode meaning we can be irritable, maybe a little bit standoffish, maybe a little bit passive aggressive or aggressive in our communication with people and with our behaviors with the people in our home. Um, we might be uh, in flight mode where we want to run away or we just want to flee the situation. You may not be able to physically get up and leave, but there's a feeling of wanting to move away from that's occurring in your body. You might want to numb out, doing a lot of binge watching or binging on social media, um, maybe sleeping a lot, maybe eating a lot. So think of, uh, just be aware of different ways that you might be trying to avoid the current um, experience and the, the home environment that you may be in. Um, so that's fight or flight. There's also freeze and faint. When we freeze, you might be in a freeze response where it's hard to move. It may be hard to get out of bed or to move towards the kitchen to get food or to move towards doing your work. That there may be this sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach. You might feel um, low energy. And then finally, the faint response is where we feel uh, maybe we've kind of exited our bodies, uh, if you will, that we have um, become a little bit less focused. There's a fogginess in our thinking. We might be a little bit spaced out. So if you notice and recognize any of these ways of being in your body, that is the first step to finding some relief and some space so that you can remind yourself and uh, access those parts of you that are more fully expressed so that you can remember that they are not gone, that these parts of you are here and that they will be able to emerge again in, um, in a different kind of a way. To help ourselves, when we find ourselves bracing in one of those responses, noticing and realizing that, oh, I, the environment that I'm in does not feel good to me. The first step again is to recognize it. The second step is to take some breaths 
and to come back into the present moment and to look around, maybe notice some of the colors in the room, ground yourself, feel your feet contacting the ground or some part of your body touching the surface that it's on as a way of getting yourself into the present room moment. You can place your hand over your heart and remind yourself that I am enough, that this time is for is not forever and that I will be able to move freely again and that all parts of me are here alive and that I honor them with my presence and acknowledgement. I honor all parts of myself every time I check in with my breath. And the more that we're able to find our breath to create a little bit of mobility and movement in our bodies to take up more physical space, the more we can relax our nervous system and release some of the fear that may come along with being in an uncomfortable environment. I hope that was helpful for you today. Just know that there's so many wonderful body strategies that you can do even when the outer world is not changing, we can still shift on the inside. And there is a true power and healing that occurs as we do that. Please visit us at the RISE Center for more resources, for more opportunities to practice these embodiment strategies and to find greater access and anchoring in your well-being. Thank you.